Hey everyone, it's Wednesday the 17th of July and it's 10 past 6 in the evening. And I've got a lot to cover in this video. Um, I have an update on my sister. As I mentioned uh, in the previous video, that last Monday she got taken to the hospital after her waters broke. And then early hours of Tuesday morning she gave birth to my niece. Um, I've also got a lot to talk about regarding my moped. Um, and the bike shows and an upcoming bike show and whatnot. So we'll talk about that as well. Plus, I've literally just got a handful of die-cast models here that I picked up last Sunday at the annual, um, annual, the monthly car boot sale that's held here in town on our uh, memorial park. Oh, and plus I've got a car here that I actually found in a charity shop. I still can't believe I paid just one pound for this. Um, plus, in this box I have... Some brand new, old stock, bicycle lamps. So we'll have a look at those as well. So, first off, my sister. Well, I can tell you now that she is home and doing well. Her and baby are doing well. Um, she came home about 7 o'clock last night, so my stepdad told me. Um, and she's the tiniest little thing. It's the first time I've seen my niece. <laughs> she's tiny. Six pounds thirteen ounces. If yeah, if memory serves correctly. Um, yep. Both are doing well. A week old. I can't believe a week has gone by already. Um. So, all's great there. I'm pretty pleased for them. Um, now, I think we'll have a look at these bicycle lights first. Because that sort of rolls into... Well, I can roll it into the moped talk. Um, because I got these from Mondo. Because uh, I picked these up from him tonight. He's actually given me permission to uh, use his name on the channel. So... I picked him up from Mondo. Now, he's the chap that's organised the um, Fun Day bike show. Um, and coming up on the 27th of July is another bike show in the little village of Hoverton here in Norfolk. Um, and I plan to ride over to the meetup at my cafe, which is also in Hover Hoverton. That's what a cafe is actually called, my cafe. And then go from there to the uh, village hall where the show is going to take place. Um, so yeah, he messaged me last night actually. With a couple of photos as well, asking if I wanted these. Now these are actually the old stock. Got all the details there, they're ever ready night riders. Quite a popular light back in the day. I even had some as a kid bought for me I think as a birthday present because at that age I was actually wanting to ride the bike out on the roads you know and at night and that was a strict rule I was not allowed to ride the bike at night unless I had lights so I've got a set of lights I must have been the only like 11 12 year old that was happy as a pig in poop to get a set of bicycle lights as a birthday gift So we've got brand new, see they've not been opened, they're still sealed in the bags. Brand spanking new. I don't think I, I'm going to actually use these though. I'll stick to using the um, tatty looking ones, look at that. A bit of muck there from storage on them, but we're not spanking new. And to top it off, I sort of do and I don't want to open them. I do because I am totally curious to know if they've still, after all these years, got charge. Let's 
suppose it doesn't really matter if I open these, do it? They, they don't have any value anyway. So t I'll tell you what we'll do. I've got my multimeter down there. So yeah, Mondo very kindly uh, gave me these. I think I do need a little shelf somewhere that I can put harder to see stuff like, or harder to find stuff like that on. So it's not just road lamps everywhere. Um, right, should we have a look? Because curiosity, curiosity will eventually get the better of me anyway, so. Get that onto vaults. I wonder if I could just pierce a hole. Oh, I could. I could just pierce a hole through the wrapper. I hope. I hope that one's fell out of the packet anyway now. I was hoping I could just poke a little hole in there and... <laughs> they're dead. Ooh! They're not. I've got 1.54 volts in this one. I'm not kidding either. Um, I don't know how I can... I'm just trying to get this to stand so I can actually show you. You know I'm not fibbing. There's the mirror. Here's the battery. Let's put that on the base again. So we've got the negative on the base of the battery there. One point five four volts. I was not expecting that. Experiment number two then. Let's put the batteries in here and see if they actually work. Then we'll know if my meter is fibbing, won't we? Side here. And how tough these springs are. Come on. <laughs> no. I'm just going to grab a couple of D cells just to make, um, that I know I charge just to make sure. Well, I think my meter might be telling me porkies. careful when I pop the base off and I'm going to fly across the room because these are uh, tough springs on this. Do you know, I don't really see the fascination with this but people do sell and buy these old school batteries on eBay. Well, I say I don't see the fascination in it and here I am collecting weird lights and other bits and pieces so I suppose the same thing applies, you know. People just, some people just like clicking on the batteries. Yes, yeah, definitely the batteries. That's weird. Uh, meter says they're good, but battery says they're not, unless one of them was dead. But well, I'll keep these in here. Paperwork on the bottom. I see we've got the paperwork for them. Okay, now that does make it even rarer. I mean, I've seen these sets on eBay. 
some of them have been opened because you know they've been opened just to use the battery so the batteries are missing uh, you know stuff like that Imagine wondering if this was done for Argos or something like that, because it's got a catalogue number there. And a lot of the Knight Rider sets I've seen come in like a transparent um, see-through plastic pack with like the very similar to that cardboard bit at the top. Manufacturer's Ref 112 Sunk Lab. Mm. The box is actually in good condition as well. Yeah. So, I actually totally forgot that Mondo does um, watch my videos as well. <laughs> but uh, here's the chap that started the East Anglian Bikers, Trikers, and Small CC Bikers group over on Facebook. I will put a link in the description down below there um, but I do believe you actually have to be within the East Angular region to join um, and you can literally be a rider of anything trike, quad bike, um, sports bike, chopper, cruiser, the stupid moped like mine <laughs> You can literally just ride, be a ride of anything and you can join. Uh, and as I said, there is another show on the 27th of July in Hoverton. Um, on the Norfolk Broads. Uh, starts at 10am. And as I said, a lot of us from the group, or those that can attend at least, are going to meet up at a cafe called My Cafe, which is literally just... I'm about half a mile or so up the road, probably not even that, from the uh, event site which is at Hoverton Village Hall. And then we will spend most of the day at the uh, show. Free entry. Forgot to add that. Free entry. Uh, and a date for your diary for next year is the 28th of June for the next fun day um, motorbike show. Because in fairness, I don't think we actually have much in the way of designated motorbike shows here in Norfolk. Uh, do correct me if I'm wrong, but I really cannot think of anything off the top of my head. I know with a lot of the classic car shows that go on throughout the year, they allow the motorbikes to join as well. Um, like at Skype and Go. Um, unfortunately they didn't have their annual event this year um, but that's like a classic car and bike show with an auto jumble which I do miss because I do like wandering around the auto jumble because you find die casts and obviously spare car parts and whatnot. which is where I got one of my uh, blue beacons from uh, that, that, that was last year Yeah. No. Um, on the subject of mopeds, I will be taking the leeway to uh, the show at Hoverton. Apparently that got more attention at the one in town than I thought it did. And it's because it's such an unusual machine. That's one of the reasons I bought it when I saw it on Facebook. I thought, that's quite unusual. It's practical. Very practical, actually. It's been um, very useful for me. You know, I don't have a car, so that big old top box on the back is brilliant for me. Um, I don't want to say it's ugly. I mean, there are prettier scooters out there, but I wouldn't say it's ugly. It's definitely different. Um, in fact, I've heard it called cute as well. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
I love it. I'm actually uncertain about selling it now. My jog, on the other hand, it's just sat on my mum's garden. I don't know if Mike on the camera picked that up, but that was our fire engine up going out on a show. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I ever sell it, it's probably going to be a while off yet. Um, I'm still surprised that I even bought it, knowing it's a Chinese bike, because I, I said, and I always swore that I would never own a Chinese bike. Now I own one, now I ride one, and now I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm going to touch wood because I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> yeah, anyway. I mentioned a little mishap, didn't I, earlier in the video. It's almost like my brain just completely melted at that point. And, you know, it's just like when, when a computer has a momentary hissy fit. <laughs> so, basically, I was riding home from Mum's and I got back here into town. Um, I was approaching a junction where I had to turn right and it's actually on a corner. So I had to pull far enough forward so I could actually see around the corner to see what, you know, whether anything was coming or not. But for some reason, when I went to turn into said junction, I took it far too wide. I don't know why I wasn't turning harder than I was. I like I said, I do not know what was going through my mind. I don't think anything was going through my mind at that moment in time. And I ended up scraping the bike down the curbs. And there's a car behind me as well, just to make things even worse probably more than one car, I wasn't paying attention. And then, for some stupid bloody reason, we just thought, alright, you know, hit the brake to stop, you know. No, my hand just kept blipping the bloody throttle for some reason. Just short blips. But I could distinctly remember my brain saying, brake, brake. And my hand was just doing the complete opposite. Like I said, it's just like everything just had a momentary meltdown. <laughs> but... No damage done, I stayed upright, and just a bruised ego. But it's the first time I've done anything like that, that's, that's what actually concerns me the most. You know? I mean, I watch, I don't know how many different bikers on YouTube and Facebook Reels and TikTok and whatnot. You know, even the seasoned ones, sometimes I'll stop and they might stagger a little bit. Um, you know, I do things like that. But then again, my my sense of balance when I'm stationary is actually not that good thanks to uh, the autism. Um, in fact, before I was diagnosed with autism, it was thought that I may have a condition called dyspraxia, which is, can heavily affect hand-eye coordination, sense of balance and things like that. Um, but... Uh, you know, I saw a specialist and they said I wasn't, I was showing signs of it, but not enough for a diagnosis. And then when I got the autism diagnosis, it actually turns out that autism can bring out some symptoms of dyspraxia. Hence my scruffy handwriting as well. Um, that's where myself and my stepdad are actually like, we've both got scruffy handwriting, but he's dyslexic. Um, and I actually have to say, it's in fairly recent years, not to say the last decade, that I actually learned that dyslexia can affect people differently. I always thought it was, you know, simply black and white, like um, you can, you just can't read or write. That's what I thought it was. That's what I grew up being told when I was in school. You know, that's what dyslexia was. You can't read or write. But. I have found out in my adult years that it affects different it affects people differently. I've got a friend who I met uh, 15 years ago actually when I was living in 
a um, adult hostel shared home thing in Chroma. Um, and he struggled with big words. He could read small ones fine, but it was the bigger words that he struggled with. Now my stepdad can read, um, but spelling he struggles with. And his handwriting is not the best either. Um, and then I've got another friend who literally he can barely write his own name, phone number and address. Um, you know, he's that, I suppose, heavily dyslexic. I don't know the correct term, so I don't want to insult anyone. Um, anyway, I, I digressed a bit there, didn't I? So, yeah, I really... I, it's bugging me. What happened on that moped yesterday really bugs me, because I don't know why or what caused it to happen. I really don't. It's literally just like my brain just had a complete meltdown for like 20 seconds. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but in other moped news, I have started tinkering around with the Honda PF50. Although it's a bit difficult because I do not have a clear workbench to work on. <laughs> one's full of carpet and the other one's um, just, well, a typical workbench is just full of crap. <laughs> and however frequently I clean it up, it's, I can't just blame my stepdad, it's me as well. You know, get things over, just throw it on the workbench and we'll clear it up later. And by the time later gets there, you just do not have a workbench at all. <laughs> I mean, there's some pliers and things I was looking for earlier. I can't find them. I don't know where they are. I don't know if my stepdad's used them and left them somewhere. I don't know if they're buried in a bloody workshop somewhere. Probably buried in a workshop somewhere, actually. And on top of that, there's two big rolls of carpet laying on the floor. And one of them's got to go in my bedroom. At least one of them's got to go in my bedroom. It's possibly a join, but I don't care about joins. I just got to get some underlay for that as well. Um, so much I need to do, but it all costs money and it's just like, what do I do first? You know, I want to get the um, timber so I can build the tables here in the lounge to get the Lego City ready and all the Lego swords so I can then get in the bedroom and do something with the model railway. But again, that costs money. Um, I also want to save to get a 125 so I've got something a bit bigger and quicker to enjoy. So I can then use the leeway for perhaps shows and literally if I have to take some stuff over to my mum's I can take that and fill a top box and whatnot. I need to go and get some groceries or something like that because it's great for that as well. This is fan blowing bloody cat hair into my face or something because I keep tickling like hairs are getting on me. Oh dear. Um, but yeah, anyway, I have started on the little Honda PF50. It's a Novio and it's a four stroke version. I don't know if I've ever, ever mentioned that. Um, I did check the oil in it the other day and it was showing as empty. So I must remember to, uh, I suppose I, do, I should do an oil change. There's like a dribble on the bottom of the uh, dipstick. Um, but you see, the, I've got to buy parts for that, so it's just like, what do I do first? <laughs> um, because I really don't want to put off tinkering around with those two little Hondas any longer. Um, they've been kicking around for two. I can't believe they've been kicking around for like five years now. I mean, the uh, the Novio is going to... I think the trickiest part is going to be sorting the seat out, because that's going to need a whole new bit of foam and a new cover. And I have no idea what I'm doing with that when it comes to that sort of thing. I could probably cut the foam... I could find like a, a sofa cushion from somewhere and I could cut the foam to shape. So I've still got the old foam for temp as a template, you know. It's 
it's not usable because it is disintegrating but there's enough of it there to use as a template plus I've got the metal bit that I can use as well you know the base of the seam um, I wouldn't know where to start when it comes to covering it because I've tried unless there's anywhere online that I don't know about I've tried looking for one and I can't find one and by that I mean I've looked on eBay and I can't find one on eBay but you know if anyone knows of any other places online or even in Norfolk that might have the parts please let me know in the comments because <laughs> um, I really could use a new fuel tank I think I can patch that one up to make it usable because um, I have found where the leak is and it's not a big one and it's just leaking where I've already tried to patch it up um, I just don't think it, it looks like the metal paint stuff I use just hasn't quite sealed one little bit um, if that's the case then I'll just get some more putty and I'll just go over that bit again and then hope for the best and hope I can get it <laughs> Uh, so I would like to keep everything original. I mean, I could make a custom tank for it, but I would like to keep as much of it original as possible. That's one of the reasons I've just decided not to paint it. I mean, the only benefit it would have is to make it look brand new. I think it looks good enough as it is. One of the reasons it's taken me so long to get to this point because I wanted to take it all apart, respray it and put it all back together again. You know, that's what I've been waiting on and trying to find the time and the space to actually do that. Because every time I think I get space and the time, either the space gets filled up with something else or I just, you know, something comes along and I have to just put it on the back burner again. And maybe that's the other reason I decided, you know what, I'm just going to leave it as it is and just bolt it back together and replace the bits that are missing which isn't a great deal. I bought two brake cables that don't fit. Yay. They said they were for PF50 Novio. I'm sure that's what the advert said. But you know I bought them like a year ago so there's no way I can return them or even I doubt I can even find the advert on eBay you now. So I'm gonna look again to see what I can find. Or maybe I could find something else that I could make work. Um, I've got to wire the headlight up, wire the horn up and bolt that on. Bolt the horn guard on. Oil up the chain. Because the sprockets and everything look okay. The chain feels okay. There's not a great deal of slot, or if any, in it. It just needs a good lube, um, lube up. Put the chain guard on, put a new inner tube in the back tyre, once I've got some tyre spoons, I'm going to get some proper rubber bike tyre spoons. My stepdad's got some that he bought when he uh, restored his Massey Fergie tractor, but they're a bit big. I can't quite get them between the rim and the tyre to pull them off, and if I do, they just slip off, because I'm guessing it's because it's a different shape of tyre. Um, but in fairness, you can get a set of tar spoons from a bike quite cheap, so I will, as soon as I'm able to, order a set. Because I've got the inner tubes. I bought two. I bought one for the uh, Camino and one for the PF50. Because typically, they've both got flat back tyres. They've got flat front tyres now, because I haven't pumped them up in a long time. But they're not punctured, they've just gone flat from sitting around doing nothing. Uh, quick oil change. Just trying to remember what else I needed. I mean, I'd like to set up the decompression lever so I could shut it off, but it's not really that important. Because you know, when I come to a stop, I can just reach down on top of the engine and flick the lever with my finger. So it's not that big of a deal. Mind you, it would aid in starting it, wouldn't it? Because if you pedal it with the decompressor switch on, so you've got no compression, you can actually pedal it faster and get some speed up. You just let go of the 
lever and hope she starts. Uh, card could probably benefit with a clean out. I mean, it had been stored with no fuel in it when I bought it, and I've not had any fuel in it since I've owned it, but I think just take it off and perhaps give it a quick blowout with an air compressor, and I think that'll be okay to go. Um, seriously, if I actually had all the parts there and ready to go, one weekend I could probably have that bike done. Minus a seat. And no, the one from the Camino won't fit, otherwise I'd have borrowed that one. Different um, fittings on them. They fit to the bike um, differently. Which is a shame, because they are both exactly the same bloody shape. I was actually looking, I think the wheels are the same size as well. Um, the tyres on the Camino are shot, there's no way I'd ride that on the road. Technically, MOT exempt, so you could say, well, you could, because you don't have to have an MOT, but you still have to make sure your vehicle is in roadworthy condition. Otherwise, the police can still pull you over and ticket you. And even prohibit the vehicle from being moved until those defects are fixed. Um, that seems to be the thing that nobody talks about when they say, you know, the vehicle is tax and MOT exempt. No, it just means you don't have to take it for a yearly MOT. It does not mean that you can leave it to get into a dangerous state and still use it on the road. And besides, you know, the last thing I'd want is to be riding a bike down the road and have the tire blow out on me. You know, on a bicycle it's different. You're sort of doing five to ten mile an hour and they just go pop your tire deflates. Uh, <laughs> But when you're doing like 30 mile an hour or even faster on a, you know, if you've got a super bike or something, you do not want a tyre to blow out. Right. I think that's enough moped talk. Let's uh, have a look at these few bits of die cast that I put. Oh, and I've got a battery charger here as well. For the camera. And two new batteries. We'll have a look at that in a minute. I nearly forgot about that. I just looked back here and saw it. Oh, that battery's actually charged. So, I've got another boxed matchbox model. Not a really desirable one, and I did have to tape down that end bit. But I just like this box design, so I will literally buy anything that's in this box design. Maybe it's because I remember these from my childhood, and I remember quite, you know, distinctly going into the store and going to the toy section and seeing all of these boxes all lined up on the pegs and going through them you know I pick out my uh, weekly matchbox car that my mum used to buy me and she can remember them for being like 50p and I remember when I was able to go in and buy them myself with pocket money they were 99p and now they're like nearly two quid each no actually Hot Wheels are more than that they're like £2.50 each in some places yeah, talk about inflation. Uh, next up, I've got five Matchbox Model A vans, which I've developed quite the collection of. So I've got the York Fair, America's oldest fair. I think this is my favourite one, which is weird because I've always said yellow is not one of my favourite colours. But I do like yellow when it's put with another colour, and I think yellow and green actually works quite well. What else have we got? Uh, the Isle of Man TT86. So I'm guessing that's from 1986. 20th, 20th of May to the 6th of June. Nice light blue colour. These were all in fairly decent condition as well. Uh, the Lyceum Theatre? I don't know if I've pronounced that correctly. Just going to try and show you what Snowy's doing. Nope. I bet you as soon as I move this camera she's going to bloody turn around. Yeah, 
There she is. <laughs> Queen of the castle. Snowy. You know. <laughs> you know, beautiful. Where's your brother? I don't know where your brother is. He's not on the... Oh, he's on the floor for some... I don't know why he's on the floor at the bottom of the uh, cat tree. Smudgy! You all right down there? Normally he's on the bed. Yeah, he's looking at me. He's all right. Now he's acting like he's seeing something. Or it could be the uh, reflection of the trees or the shadows of the trees on the wall and whatnot. Right. Next up. Let's give the old reading squints a while. Well, I don't know where my new squints are. My distance squints, not my, my reading. Oh, well, that is horrible looking right across the room. Everything is all so, sort of... It's like looking underwater, actually. That's the best way I could describe it. But up close like this is perfectly fine. No, that's still way too small. That really is small print on this. 13th and 16th July 1982 Southern 100 Isle of Man That's what that one is I have to take those off otherwise that's going to really that probably give me a headache actually I mean they do help me read but that writing was way too small Right, the last Model A I've got is a WH Smith & Sons Limited. I actually do not know how many of these little vans I've got now, but it does appear that Matchbox made hundreds. I was going to say thousands, but at least hundreds. Worldwide as well. I've got an Australian boxed set through there as well in the bedroom. Now, I may not be able to actually get in the bedroom to do anything on the model railway but I can still buy vehicles find this lovely little uh, 176 scale coach for one pound same person I actually got those model A vans and the PG tips van from uh, the model A vans were all 50p that I think was one pound and the boxed PG tips van was a pound I just really like that style of a uh, old coach, and it is, you know, in OO scale, one seven six. I'm not sure who actually made this. Though. I don't think it's Oxford. It hasn't got Oxford on the bottom. It's still a nice looking coach, though. I found a nice little matchbox model of yesteryear fire truck, missing its ladder. The reason I got it is because this top bit is actually in good, complete condition. It's not broken. I do believe at least one of my other ones it is broken. I don't know what she's doing. But thanks to her, I do need to think about getting a new cat tree for them because that top plinth that she was sitting on, all the edges are shredded up on it. Yeah, she's doing it now. She's sitting there chewing on the edge. To cats, their tree. I bought it for them. They can do what they like with it. Once it gets too ropey or falling a bit, so I'm going to get another one. Right, the last, no, I'm going to say the last two, but the last two I got from the car boot at least are Del Prado models. So I've got this one, which is a Duesenberg, Duesenberg, something like that. Not normally the sort of style of vehicle I would go for in my collection. But, as I've said before, sometimes, even then, I'll see a vehicle that really just catches my eye. And this was one of them. It did have all the box and the little plinth on it, and I took those off, because I don't like storing models on those plastic plinths. Um, and the box was all squished. And the other one I got was a little Renault. Uh, Renault Alpine. Now that I think about it, have I got one of these? 
I might have one of these. Um, won't be the first time I've done that. Um, I did actually sell a bunch of Del Prado models on eBay recently. I didn't sell for much. None of them for more than like three, four pounds. And I start them all at 99p and I think most of them actually did sell at 99p. But I'm surprised they actually sold. I didn't think they were that desirable. Um, I was told that Del Prado released the models with like a magazine, so you'd buy like the weekly or monthly magazine, whatever it was. Uh, I have got a Volkswagen Beetles and will you just make me jump? <laughs> I saw him walking across the floor as well, but I just wasn't expecting him to jump up here. Want some daddy cuddles? At least you want cuddles at a reasonable hour during the day. Unlike Missy. <laughs> Usually at sort of four, five o'clock in the morning. Don't you, madam? It's actually unlike him to get on my lap, actually. Scritchy, 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 scritchy. Say hello to Smudgy. He's my favourite boy. Yeah. And your sister's my favourite little girl. He's purring away. Anyway, the last car I've got is one that I actually found in a local charity shop recently. And that's this Nissan, which is actually part of the Fast and Furious franchise. It's in absolute top condition. In fact, I'd go as far as say that's actually a mint condition model. <laughs> as much as he gets his tail out of the way. Um, and it was just one pound. I don't know if they realised what this actually was or not. Um, and again, that's not something I would normally go for, but I do like the colour blue, and I do like that shade of blue. And I actually think those black wheel rims do look nice on that as well. Oh, Smudgy, you're sliding off my leg. <laughs> Mwah. Right. Uh, have I covered everything? Um, I do want to get some more of the uh, Mobike Group's merch. I've got some stickers. I've got one on the back of my helmet, and one on the front of the moped, and one on the back. I'll show you that if Smudgy uh, decides. To, when Smudgy decides to get off my lap, I'll just show you my helmet. Which has actually just had a new visor fitted as well. My old one was just scratched to buggery. It's the downside to visors, I found that they scratch quite easily. You know, it doesn't take a lot to bloody scratch them. You're going to be a pain now, you're not going to get off my lap, and I don't really want to disturb him. He's a lap kitty now, but... Oh. oh yeah. I bought this tripod a couple of months ago, didn't I? It's a National Geo tripod I got out of Argos. For 30 quid. Yeah, just a cheap one. Because my one broke. And I knew at the time, I think I even mentioned it at the time when I bought this, that I knew I had a spare one somewhere and I couldn't find it. And I was at my mum's a couple of days ago. I actually went up to the top shed. Oh no, this was yesterday. Because we were looking for an HDMI cable for the um, soundbar and subwoofer that my stepdad bought off me. Um, so I went to the top shed looking for an HDMI cable and look what I found. The spare tripod that I knew I had and couldn't find. That was just laying on the shed floor. <laughs> SLIK brand as well. Now that will be going on the moped 
uh, when I do this bike show because I'm going to try and do like a walk around video of everything because why not that would probably be good for the group as well bit of a promotion um, that is that's cat hair that's tickling my nose um, that's actually quite lightweight I have got another tripod that I bought from the same charity shop I got that car from actually um, but I bought that a couple of weeks ago it's a bit more heavier duty than uh, these two so now I've got three good tripods this one's a bit more compact because the legs are thinner so it sort of takes up a, a bit less room but I think weight right, weight wise, I think this is better. I think this one's going to be a bit more stable as well. I mean, this one is a bit. I mean, that is me just gently tapping on one of the legs, literally just gently going like that. So that one's a bit more wobbly. And I think a lot of that has to do with how the camera mounts to the top. Right. Batteries. That was it for the cameras. So. I lost the one for this camera. It's in this flat somewhere. I just do not know where. Because um, the clip on the back is a little bit weak. Where this has fallen over on the old tripod. I don't know how many times. Um, I think it's over there. Somewhere. It may fall into one of those boxes of Lego or something. I don't know. I've had the die cast boxes completely tipped out. And I've gone through the book. Because I've actually saw through the die cast. Uh, not found it. Um, and the one for the other camera is quite weak now after like five, six years. So I went on Amazon. I literally just searched for Sony Handycam battery. And I found um, basically a kit. It came with two batteries and a USB charger. This is actually no fully charged. Cell battery off the other camera and they looked identical all little interlocking bits identical I've tried this one on the camera it does fit um, they feel a bit light but they are meant to be 1200 milliamp hour the Duracell one says um, 650 milliamp hour so in theory these are bigger I'm skeptical on that just because these aren't like a well known brand like Duracell. This is just a Dura Pro. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you, you, your guess would be as good as mine. But because it's been, you know, Prime Day, I don't know what they call it Prime Day when it runs for two days. I got this lot for like 20 quid, 20% 20 off. Why well, I went for it. So I'm going to put the other one on charge. There's probably a charge in it, but I will take both batteries as a you know a just in case. Ooh, the screen lights up. And that screen goes off and the battery stops flashing when it's charged. And I knew that without even looking at the uh, little manual slip. I think I will just end up using both those batteries on this camera for now because I don't really use this one that much apart from taking the odd photo with it. I mean, look at how tatty it is. And believe it or not, it still works perfectly fine. It's rather tatty and beat up because this has been dropped I don't know how many times. I mean, look at that USB cable. I've had to tape it up because the insulation is just disintegrating, literally. I don't know how that cable is still working. It is. Uh, more by luck than judgment, I think. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's literally held together with hopes and dreams and it still works. That's, that to me is a testament to Sony though. Um, but I have to say, I do like Sony products. I've always been a fan of Sony. Yeah, I know Sony's got their issues as well, you know, and some of their products aren't as good as others, just like any other company out there. I mean, I've got this one, a little Sony point and shoot, and I can't remember where I got this from, but that's a great little camera as well. You know, it's got a little rechargeable battery in there, 16 megabyte memory card that I, um, megabyte, gigabyte, not memory, megabyte, 
when I, t I think my brain just had one of them moments again. Very sensitive power button because I barely pressed it and it turned it on. I mean, that does video as well. It's not going to be the best quality video because it is only a little pocket point and shoot camera. But I'll probably t I'll take that. Obviously, I'll take my phone. I'll take this with the spare batteries and whatnot. Um, anything else while I'm here? Oh, I don't think I showed you these, did I? Me and my lights, I actually found these in another charity shop. That's where I got a lot of my like, bulbs from over the years, just charity shops. But I've never seen a golf ball bulb like that. I've seen the old fire glow bulbs, you know, with a sort of like translucent red colour. But not a little 25 watt um, golf ball. And I've got three of them. 50p each. I oh, know I spend lots of money, don't I? I think that's what's quite deceptive with me. A lot of people would probably look at what I've got and think I've spent literally thousands on everything. I probably have over like the course of 30 years. I probably have, you know. Um, but in reality, not a lot, you know. These lovely little vans. Near mint condition, 50p each. That's all I paid for them. <laughs> um... Oh yeah, I got these at the uh, car boot as well. A couple of little rear, rear fog lights, 50p. I've actually got one down there that I've actually attached the wire to and whatnot. I thought when I picked them up, because one was this way up, the other one was sitting that way up, so I thought I'd got a reverse and a fog light. Now, two fog lights. Should have read the end of the box. Oh, pardon me. Don't need a fog light, I don't have a car, but I bought them anyway. Because lights. I'm pretty certain that my autistic obsession is actually lights. Because <laughs> I just like anything that lights up. Seriously, anything. You know, if I bought a little portable radio and it's got a little LED on it, you know, power LED, that's my favourite point part of it, the fact it's got an LED that lights up. I wish I was kidding, I'm not. That would be my favourite part of it. Let me take this little radio here, for example. It's got three LEDs that light up there. One for AM, one for FM, and one for tune. And you've got FM stereo. So I flip the switch on. Two little red LEDs light up. That I like it because it's got the LCD display on it, it's got the alarm clock on it, and the whole thing works. And it's actually got quite a few bands on it because it's got um, MW and SW, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. That's a lot of AM bands. Headphone, a little jack there for a mains adapter. If you can find a 3 volt one, that would fit it. Was trying to see if that's centre positive or centre negative. There's not many people would think of checking that. That's a good job I did check it because it's actually centre negative, not positive. You know, most electronic devices these days, well, maybe not so much these days because it's all USB, but you know, a lot of more modern devices than this one, that would be um, centre positive. That eventually became like the standard. I can't even remember where I got this from. It's been a damn good little radio. Right. I think my magnifying glass needs a good clean. Anyway, I think I'll end the video here. I think it's gone on long enough. I need to go and get myself a drink. I have to go to Morrison's because I'm going to need some more drinks because I'm running out. So we'll go and get a pack from there. Uh, yeah, so thanks a lot for watching everyone. You know, and as always, if you like the video, please give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. 
Um, please consider subscribing, it's totally free to do so and it just helps you follow my channel. You don't get notifications every time I upload a useless video. <laughs> and if you'd like to check out the video description down below the video, as I said earlier I will put a link to uh, the bikers Facebook group down there, the East Anglian Bikers, Trikers and Small CC Bikers, as well as a link to my other two YouTube channels, my Discord server and my Twitch channel. I was just watching what Smudge is doing and I've seen something on my floor. He's watching something on the floor. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.